It is the year 2004 and a large dump site is being reorganised and closed off to the public. Not long ago you could freely roam and sift through the waste in kind of a tetanus fueled treasure hunt. But jokes aside, the dump site just four years ago was the location of a tragedy with a loss of an unknown number of lives. Some say up to a thousand lost their lives in the disaster, which was a landslide in which many were buried beneath a city's waste. It would highlight the desperate situation many find themselves in, digging through rubbish to scrape together a living. Today we're looking at the Pietus rubbish landslide. My name is John and welcome to Plainly Difficult. A rubbish history. The world we live in is a wasteful one. We as a species love to throw stuff away, no matter if it's the first, second or third world, an inevitable side effect of society is of landfills. I know I'm not really saying anything particularly new here. Sadly, a lot of what we use just ends up in the ground. But for today, I'm going to talk about one country and one city's landfill, the Payatas in the Philippines. Well, actually, I'm actually going to talk about two landfills, but what's a little bit of dump site rambling between friends? The first of which I'm going to talk about is the Smoky Mountain dump site in Tondo, Manila. It had a roughly 50 year history and over its lifetime, a mountain of rubbish had formed. The mountain part of the name is from the height of the dump, but the smoky part came from its ability to randomly and without warning spontaneously catch fire. There are an estimated 20 million people in the Philippines living in slums and on the poverty line. As such, many try to eke out a living picking through rubbish on the hunt for materials that can be sold to scrap merchants. Being an open dump, the Smoky Mountain had become a work site and in some cases a home for scavengers. A community had evolved around the site in which a microeconomy relied on the daily arrival of dump trucks leaving waste from the growing city of Manila. In the early 1990s, the government set in motion a plan to close Smoky Mountain and repurpose the area for proper housing for those living in the nearby slums. This caused a mass exodus of people to the main setting for our video, the Payatas landfill in Quezon City, Manila. The site has seen use as a waste dump since the 1970s, but it had a dramatic increase in waste after the closure of Smoky Mountain, and life on the locally named Smoky Mountain 2 was harsh for the people sifting through the trash. Working under the scorching sun in the summer and heavy rain in the raining season, the scavengers' experience was brutal. The amount of waste throughout the 90s increased to thousands of tonnes per day. Mounds of up to 30 metres tall were formed with scavengers sifting through on a daily basis. A large amount of the valuable and recyclable materials were recovered, along with food scraps and anything else that was seen to have value. This left behind plastics and rotten organic material, which resulted in very uneven ground. Entrance to the dump site was via a residential road where trucks dumped and diggers pushed the rubbish along down the waste site. Reportedly, on a WS.org website report, each truck had only had to pay $2.25 to dump anything at Payetus. The site loomed over nearby residential buildings, offering probably one of the worst selling features an estate agent could think of, and around 80,000 people live nearby in Payetus. Not only that, but many rubbish scavengers had actually set up slums on top of the dump site itself. The lack of rent made it the only viable option for many. On top of that, being on site meant that you got first dibs over the fresh waste when it gets dumped. The landfill site didn't really have any structural organising. As such, the waste was unequally compacted, leading to cases of small landslides on a semi-regular basis. However, a couple of trenches had been dug at the bottom to help water runoff. Below the waste on the original ground was a base of silty clay. The waste that was dumped and was sorted and left behind resulted in methane generation from rotting food, which could cause random fires and toxic smoke to emanate from the rubbish. 
life on the dump was treacherous, but in July 2000, it was going to get a hell of a lot worse. The Disaster It is the 10th of July 2000, and the Paetus dump site has been subjected to heavy rainfall over the previous 10 days. It had leached into the dump site's subsurface layer, and then mixed into the non-compacted rubbish. By the early morning, tragedy was near. At roughly 4.30 in the morning, residents heard a thunder-like burst, followed by a section of the Paetus dump site failing and sliding down into a residential area below. Due to the early hour, many were still inside their homes. Both occupants of the housing and the shanty accommodation were buried in the landslide, trapping an unknown number of people. Some have posited this up to a thousand. Parts of the ground around the failed landfill were covered in rubbish up to 10 metres deep, covering an area estimated at 30,000 square metres. The waste slide disturbed flammable gases that had accumulated below the surface. This then caught a light on the disrupted electrical cabling. This now meant that the toxic landslide was now on fire. Understandably, emergency workers had a tough time trying to drag out survivors and now also had to battle flames and a toxic smoke from the burning plastic. Several hundred were known to be missing after the slide. Although, as I mentioned before, the number is not actually really known. The first day of relief works managed to drag survivors from the heap, but hopes faded by the evening as reported in Relief Web. As rescuers dug through the heaps of refuse Monday, they could hear voices calling for help, but overnight the pleas faded, leaving rescuers and relatives with little hope. Emergency workers by the 12th had pulled around 125 bodies from the rubbish. As the days went on, more dead bodies were recovered. Many by the 20th of July were really decomposed. They were removed from the site and placed in black plastic bags, which were then laid out in a local school, which left the victims' families a very grim task of identification. When the search was finally called off, the death toll was between 218 and 232. However, another 300 were thought to be missing. The Aftermath so needless to say, the disaster caused significant distress to the city and the wider country. Hundreds had died, many hundreds more were displaced, losing their homes to the very rubbish that they needed to earn a living from. The disaster highlighted to the rest of the world the horrific conditions at the sharp end of the Philippine economy. The site post-disaster was closed off to open scavenging, relying instead on a license system, where the numbers of those in the piles of rubbish were limited. Eventually, the site was completely shut down in 2010 in favour of more environmentally friendly waste management. Eventually, the rubbish mountain was covered with earth, replanted with foliage and converted into a bicycle park. Lawsuits would be filed and one wouldn't be settled until 2019 as reported by the Philippine News Agency. The Quezon City Regional Trial Court ordered the city government to pay more than 6 million Philippine pesos to relatives or the victims of Paetus dump site collapse in July 2000. But what you're all probably wondering is what caused the disaster? Well, luckily for us, it has been somewhat well studied. So the rate of recycling and reuse of materials, of metals, glass and paper at Paetus would be the underlying cause of the landslide. The remaining organic material and plastics would not provide the most robust foundation for the old rubbish mountain as noted in Dr. Florian Kulsch's 2005 paper from their visit to the site four weeks post-disaster. The composition was characterised by a high portion of plastics and organics in an absence of other materials, paper, glass or metals. So the heavy rainfall preceding the landslide meant that water had managed to soak into the waste, thus reducing the sheer strength of the steep and in some places 40 to 70 degree steep waste dumps walls. Eventually a portion of the surface of the waste site had cracked which allowed further water penetration. Build up of gases within the waste could also have been an issue as it increased internal pressures which once the surrounding waste was weakened enough could trigger an unexpected deconstruction. On top of that the excavation of trenches on the base of the landfill reduced the waste mountains resisting forces which, after a certain point on the 10th of July 2000, the structure couldn't resist anymore. 
In another paper by Navid H. Jafari et al., the landslide will be summarized. In particular, rainfall from two recent typhoons and landfill gas from biodegradation caused increased pore pressures within the landfill and resulted in a decrease in effective stress and stability. The Paetus case history demonstrates that landfill operation and disposal procedures can reduce the stability of open dump facilities. So today's subject, I'm going to give it an 8 on my revised disaster scale. And this is what I've got for my disaster bingo card. Do you agree? Let me know in the comments below. This is a Plain Difficult production. All videos on the channel with Creative Commons attribution share alike licensed. Plain Difficult videos are produced by me, John, in a currently very warm and sweaty corner of Southern London, UK. I have Instagram, a second YouTube channel and Twitter. So check all those bits and pieces out if you want to see other bits and pieces I get up to. And I'd like to say thank you to all my Patreon and YouTube members for your financial support, as well as the rest of you for tuning in every week. And all that's left to say is thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like and comment. And Mr. Music, can you play us out, please? <laughs>